the earth our home the only living planet known to us for millions of years life has flourished here civilizations have lived in perfect harmony with the land and its resources for centuries but now this balance is tipping the world is witnessing a disruption of its natural cycles the race for energy is creating tremendous pressures on our resources resulting in increasing carbon dioxide emissions and affecting the climate India, one of the fastest developing economies today, is also among the nations consuming a significant amount of energy. With the targeted annual growth rate of over 8%, India's electricity demand is expected to rise by four times over 25 years. The challenge is to ensure a sustainable growth using more energy efficient practices at all levels. Experts believe that with the implementation of available energy efficiency technologies and renewable energy, India could reduce its electricity demand by 20 to 30 percent. The Energy Conservation Act of 2001 was enacted by the government to catalyze an energy efficiency movement and promote energy conservation in the country. BEE, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, was established to formulate policies and strategies to help reduce the energy intensity of the Indian economy. Particularly to address those areas where market failures are constraining the growth of energy efficiency. That's where BEs has been mandated a role through the Energy Conservation Act and that's where BE sets out to, uh, through public policy interventions. USAID India has a long presence of about 40 years of uh, partnering with the government of India in the energy sector. Uh, since 2000, USAID and government of India have a bilateral agreement on energy conservation and commercialization program, which is called the ECO program. The ECO program has uh, basically implemented three phases, ECO phase one, phase two, and phase three. Under phase one, the focus was basically on capacity building and establishment of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and the establishment of the Energy Conservation Act of Government of India. After the identification of the Energy Conservation Action Plan and the thrust areas, phase two focused on the building sector and the development of the Energy Conservation Building Code. Uh, one of the priority um, activities that we initiated about three years ago was the establishment of energy efficiency centers addressing different applications. Today, in its third phase, the United States Agency for International Development, USAID-supported ECO project, aligning with one of its objectives to create awareness and develop markets for energy efficiency technologies in key sectors of commercial buildings, small and medium enterprises and home appliances, is establishing three regional energy efficiency centers. REEK for buildings in Ahmedabad, REEK for small and medium enterprises in Nagpur, and REEK for home appliances in Kolkata. All these three sectors, the building sector, the home appliance sector, as well as the small and medium enterprises sectors, these are also the priority areas of government of India when it comes to implementing energy efficiency programs. So Bureau of Energy Efficiency already had programs in all these three areas and the idea was to strengthen these programs by creating these institutions through public-private partnership. These centers of excellence aim to be a catalyst towards an energy revolution in the country. What AID has done is just created the environment for the centers to be established, uh, catalyzing the movement. There's a lot more work to be done. But we do see these centers as agents of change. We do see these centers as networking with one another so that to the public, one can offer a variety of services. In the journey towards energy efficiency, one would look at the centers as an important landmark.
India, one of the fastest developing nations in the world today, is witnessing rapid construction, leading to an unprecedented increase in space and energy demand. Estimates reveal that the demand for commercial floor space is increasing at an average rate of 7%, creating a need for an additional 650 million square meters by the year 2020. More constructed space would mean more demand for energy and added pressure on our already scarce resources. In 2007-2008, a 9.9% deficit in the electricity supply was recorded with a peak shortage of 16.6%. The challenge for India now is to secure its growth and also achieve high energy efficiency to meet the increasing energy demands through sustainable practices. There is an urgent need for high-performance buildings that can replace energy-guzzling structures, consuming minimum energy with least amount of pressure on natural resources. Regional energy efficiency centers could play a critical role in making this a reality. There is a very important role that has been charted out for institutions with centers of excellence. They can also provide guidance in increasing the awareness about uses of different materials and they can focus their energies on re-establishing the relevance of the traditional decision-making processes for making buildings of any scale, any nature or any complexity. With these objectives in mind, Center for Environment Planning and Technology, SEPT University at Ahmedabad, has been identified to house the Regional Energy Efficiency Center for Buildings. As regards building and having energy efficiency in building, this is the first of its kind of a laboratory in the country. Our state is going to be there promoting this course and we are sure that this will give a new direction to the country. The commercial sector consumes 8% of all electricity produced in the country, which has been growing at an average 13.5% over the last four years. According to benchmarking studies by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and USAID-supported Eco3 project, a typical air-conditioned office in an urban area consumes nearly 260 kilowatt hour square meter in a year of which 40 to 50 percent is used in air conditioning, 20 to 35 percent in lighting and 20 to 35 percent in other systems and equipments. Energy audit of several buildings reveal an energy saving potential of 20 to 40 percent. This could ease the pressure on our resources tremendously. Energy efficiency technologies harnessing this potential will be demonstrated in the RIC. The building itself will function as a living laboratory. Building will be demonstrating online how much energy it is using for making people comfortable, how much energy it is using in the lighting system, how much energy it is using in, in equipments and other things. At the same time, building also will have an area which is more like an exhibition area. The upcoming REIC building is being funded by the Gujarat government with technical assistance from the USAID-supported Eco3 project. Using an integrated design process, the aim is to achieve a net zero energy building. Minimum use of glass, minimum use of artificial materials, minimum use of materials which take a lot more energy to produce. I think those would be our criteria and large reliance on natural things. We think that our RIC, the energy center, is going to be one of the first models in the country and perhaps it will become a model for other parts of the world. To enhance knowledge of building envelope and for testing of building materials, RIC will house an advanced building envelope energy performance laboratory with state-of-the-art equipment supported by MNRE Glazing Society of India and USAID supported Eco3 project. A laboratory focused entirely on energy simulation will also be housed in REEC. 
uh, this instrument is a sophisticated instrument it is used to characterize the glazing or what we can say that the building materials particularly glass this is the another instrument called FTIR here we measure the reflectance of the same sample but in the mid IR range this is the another instrument which measures the thermal property of the building materials particularly the insulating material today in India we use a lot of modern building materials modern systems modern methods of putting up our buildings and like in any other developed country we need to have products which are up to a particular standard products which are independently certified and products which are therefore reliable for the end customer the BEE Bureau of Energy Efficiency wholeheartedly supporting us pushing us all the way because they see in GSI a wonderful method of implementing the ECBC because once they want to go for making ECBC mandatory they need uh, they need to identify a third party uh, which uh, which is able to certify the products and GSI can perform that role the center will be a driving force in the implementation of ECBC, the Energy Conservation Building Code, developed by the Ministry of Power in 2007. The energy efficiency centers also provide uh, a ground, a space for uh, the uh, proving of energy efficient products and therefore for their large scale dissemination through people seeing them and believing in it. REEK will also work closely with BEE and the state government to formulate energy conservation policies and initiatives. Since we work with the state government uh, very intimately, we would like to develop policy options for them in uh, introducing measures which may become compulsory in the uh, building bylaws or building regulations. Targeting educators and professionals, builders of the future, the center aims to bring about a change through programs such as train the educators. Energy simulation is a computer application that uh, provides a lot of flexibility to architects in terms of designing a building before it is actually constructed. It allows them uh, to look at the interactive effects taking place between various building systems. For instance, uh, an architect can uh, experiment with a particular glazing type and look at the daylighting implications as well as look at the amount of cooling load that will result from the selection of that glazing. SEPT is going to be developing uh, our training programs for both professionals as well as uh, educational curriculum material that can be used in other architectural colleges and institutes and that can help in creating uh, this uh, next generation of professionals who will be better equipped to undertake the challenge of sustainable building design. Collaborating with architecture schools and research centers across the nation is the first step towards achieving this. REIT Ahmedabad, an example of a multilateral collective effort, will work with various stakeholders proving an impetus to the green building movement in the nation. These centers are really instrumental in promoting energy efficiency throughout India. The centers and the project um, really are examples of the best way to work to collaboratively together. You've just heard from a number of uh, Indians who are working on in those centers and on this project. You've heard from the government of India officials. You've heard from other USAID officials. You've heard from teachers and students and businessmen and businesswomen and you've heard from experts and management experts um, you've heard from leaders of industry associations they their voices tell the story